Hi everyone, welcome to This Work World, my name's Joe and in this video I'm going to have give you a short little guide to Moscow. I'm continuing my travel time series and this is part two. If you want to see part one you can click on the little icon on the top right here or there's a link in the description. This video is actually part of my trip when I went from London to Beijing by trains only and I went through the Trans-Siberian. I'll go into a bit more overview and a bit more details in part one so you should definitely check out that video. I was really looking forward to actually going to Moscow. It brings back so many memories of me watching uh, Moscow and Red Square and the Kremlin in so many like action films and books I read about it. Or like the Soviet time era when there was like lots of like spies running around. One of the first places I stopped off at is the Kremlin. It's one of the oldest, biggest medieval fortresses in the whole world. So I'm kind of looking forward to. Uh, thankfully, when I went, it wasn't too bad. I went fairly early in the morning, so the queues really wasn't too crazy. I do recommend you sort of like you check the times when the Kremlin is open. It closes on a few days. So whilst reading up on the Kremlin, I decided to read up on another interesting character called Ivan the Terrible. So it turns out Ivan the Terrible was a politically nice guy, and for a couple of good reasons. By the time he was 13 years old, he actually started to get his name because he faced his first opposition. And you know what he did? He just executed the guy. Not nice, right? But that's not the end of it. Apparently he would used to throw a torture animal and throw them out of the Kremlin. And on top of that, he was a bit of a crazy conqueror. One of the creations that he's kind of known for commissioning is actually uh, St. Basil's Cathedral. <laughs> So St. Basil's Cathedral was actually created to celebrate the defeat of the Tartars. It's got this crazy, quite unique dome with some amazing colours in it. And actually the colours don't stop there. You go inside the cathedral and there's also equally amazing intricate designs. Because it was so, such a unique architectural style and design, Ivan the Terrible decided uh, to blind architects so the design could not be duplicated anywhere else. That was just not very nice. The colours of the roof actually symbolise a quirk, like a bonfire going off. What I really loved about Moscow is it's full of these like really quirky elements to it. One of the things that really surprised me when I got there was the fact that some of the metro stations are basically like museums. Some of them actually had these sculptures which wouldn't look too out of place in an art exhibition and things carved into the wall. The reason being is that Lenin wanted to show off the Soviet state and how amazing it was. So he invested a fair amount of money in some of the older like metro stations. You should definitely check it out. Walking around Moscow in the city skyline you'll see some of these like particularly interesting skyscrapers. They're part of a group called the Seven Sisters. They're part of like a Stalinist star, which kind of look like something from uh, Gotham City, and you know, where Batman lives. And they, they're really like imposing, they really make to stand out. Apparently Stalin saw the style of the skyscrapers in New York, and he told his architects to actually create something quite similar. A few of them you can look inside as well. What I recommend you do is to go to the Radisson Edwardian. You can go up a bit close, and just the sense of scale is amazing. So Moscow isn't particularly cheap, so I came up with a list of basically free stuff to check out. Number one, the Lenin Mausoleum. So the Lenin Mausoleum, uh, the queue for it is quite long. It's right by the actual Red Square. It's quite hidden away, but it actually goes quite deep. It's free to get in. The queues usually go down fairly quickly. You're not allowed to film inside, so be careful. They are quite strict. Number two, the Gorky House Museum. It was actually on my list, but unfortunately I couldn't actually go myself. It was closed on the weekend, so if you do go, do double check that it's open. If you're a big fan of Art Nouveau, you should definitely check it out. The Moscow Free Walking Tour. I'm a big fan of walking tours. One of the best ones I found on moscowfreetour.com. You should definitely check them out. They've got some of the highest racings in TripAdvisor and it goes over some of the history around Red Square, walks back and forth, tells you a bit about the Cyrillic language and the actual guide herself was absolutely amazing. She gave so much good information and throughout she gives you a chance to ask questions on where to go, further places to eat. That was my little guide to Moscow, some tips for you and a bit of history. I'm going to be continuing this series of story time do check out episode one of Storytime where I'll give you more of an overview of my trip. Uh, in future episodes, I'm going to be talking more about the Mongolian and the Chinese side. Do subscribe to my channel for more stuff on travel, music and stuff around London.